It is in the country of the two rivers, where the river Tor and her sister, the Torridge, wind lazily through the North Devonshire countryside, that the strange story of Tarka the Otter begins. Here, where Canal Bridge spans the river Torridge, the animals that make up Tarka the Otter's world are to be found. To Canal Bridge every evening comes Old Nod, wisest heron of the two rivers, to spear fish for a living. In the right-hand arch of the bridge that once carried a canal across the river, roosts Eldridge, the white owl. Throughout the day, he stands among the bones and skulls of mice, watching the river. For generations, the dry cave behind the barrier of roots has been used as a sleeping place for otters. Instinct had drawn the otter to her birthplace to make a special couch of oak leaves and reeds. The hollow tree shared by owl and otter was known as Owlery Holt. The otter's attention turned from the owl. She was using all her senses to find enemies. Drifting down the river was the taint most dreaded by otters, the scent of deadlock. <laughs> Deadlock was master of the pack. In his veins ran the blood of wolves. He had an insatiable lust for otters, and he was always to be found ahead of the hunt. Must be a bitch in cub, Master. This is where Hounds marked last month. Yes, I remember. Let her be and move on downstream. Pull Deadlock out, Tommy. Deadlock, Deadlock. Ah, oh, Deadlock, leave it. Come on, leave it, Deadlock. Go on away. The otter's heart slowed. She forgot quickly. Now the bees slept and voles ran through the grass. The bitch otter made no move to leave the holt. She lay on her side in pain and a little scared. While she waited to give birth, the song of the river stole into the holt and soothed her.
Now the otter needed no comfort, for nestling in the curve of her neck was a head smaller than one of her own paws. The cub's name was Taka, which means little water wanderer. All night long, bloody Bill Brock the badger had prowled and hunted. He hastened in his waddling run, being hungry. He was always hungry. He would eat anything. Otter forgot her fright as she pulled Taka into the safety of her body again. She was careful that Taka should be clean, and many times in the nights and days of his blind helplessness, she rolled on her back to lick him. Only one morning, when the rising sun silvered the mist lying over the river, the dog otter with whom Taka's mother had mated nearly nine weeks before followed her scent to the island above the hole. Screwing through the water, turning on their backs with sideways sweeps of rudders. It gave them delight and made them hungry.
Before the coming of her cub, the otter's world had been a wilderness, but now her world was in the eyes of her firstborn. She was overjoyed when Tarka's lids unsealed and his eyes peeped upon her, blue and wondering. He was then three weeks old. The daylight at the opening of the hold held no fear for Tarka. When he was six weeks old, he peered out on the outside world for the first time. Each day, Tarka ventured further and further from the Holt and learned something new. He heard, for the first time, the ancient song of the river and yearned to get nearer to it. July were past. Time flowed with the sunlight around Owlery Hold. Tarka was now three months old. He had been taught to fish and was now ever alert to danger. Tarka's father was being hunted and was looking for sanctuary in Owlery Hope. In her overriding desire to protect Tarka, the bitch otter snapped at her mate and drove him off. heard the cry which to many otters meant that all their efforts to escape had been in vain. sound slowed and ceased. They broke out again and slowed away into silence. Tarka's father was dead.
beam wear. August and September slid into October. Out of the foamy spate, a silvery flicker shook and vanished. That night, when Taka and his mother had followed the salmon to the tail of the weir pool, an ominous sound disturbed them. Can you see anyone? It's clear, light the flare. There's one. I can see it. Be careful now. Steady. Much noise. Uh, uh, he lives on us uh, in a minute. Uh, Come on, let's get it. Uh, oh, it's only your damn finger, not your head, innit? Uh, Yellow from ash and elm and willow, buff from oak, rusty brown from chestnut. Scarlet from bramble, the waters bore away the first coloured leaves of the year. The thunderstorm roused eels from the bottoms of ponds and lakes, dikes and ditches and drains where they had hibernated during the summer. They were the females, urged seawards by a common desire to journey to their spawning beds across the Atlantic, far underneath the floating weeds of the Sargasso Sea. The eels were devourers of the eggs of salmon and trout, and the otters were devourers of eels. Although otters rid the rivers of eels, the landowners took no note of this and decreed that otters be treated as vermin.
was alone, a young male of a ferocious but persecuted tribe. The tribe's only friends, except the spirit that made it, were its enemies, the otter hunters. While the eels were migrating, Taka found his food easily. The more he killed, the more he wanted to kill, and he feasted on them till his jaws were tired. As Taka left Canal Bridge, so his cubhood ended. Now indeed did his name fit his life, for he was a wanderer and homeless. The noise of traffic frightened him, but hunger overcame his fear. What did you do then, Molly? I said to him, I said, well, if you come round again, I'll give you one for. Oh, Molly, you never. Six hours later, he was at the estuary, where the waters of the two rivers meet. History was a new world to Taka, with new sights and sounds. A new world in which every nook and cranny had to be explored to satisfy an otter's singular curiosity. of the unfamiliar salt water sharpened Taka's appetite. In the days that followed, Taka learned how to eat crabs cracking them with his teeth to set loose the flesh within. The heron and owl had been Taka's friends in his early life, now, the Brent Goose was ever alert to danger and ready to cry, Alarm! Pull out her! Come on, Shiner! The 
the salmon fisherman hated otters. Shiner in particular, for it was his finger that Tarka had bitten two months earlier. Shiner, give me that net. There's that otter out there, Shiner. We'll have him. We'll get a few bob for his skin, Billy. You save your breath for hauling, you Shiner. Save your breath for hauling. The arc of net set to catch salmon grew smaller and smaller as it was relentlessly gathered in. Come on, lads. Tarka was trapped. Got him! We got him! Quick! Desperately, Tarka searched for a way out. Afterwards, Tarka travelled to where the long Atlantic rollers, driven by December gales, incessantly pound the north side of the estuary at Saunton Sand. Warren in the sand hills came Tarka to hunt for rabbits. Yeah. Tarka heard the voices of men, and from the opening of the burrow, saw two rabbit catchers heading down the sand hills to the water. Can't you turn on the boat in the market, then? We'll just head fast as you can kill them, mate, and tell them a dip. Oh, it's all to do. Got three or four here last week. Until they nuts, Tom. Yes. Be ready to shoot them, dear. I'll kill them all right, don't you worry. The ferret's rank smell and its tinkling bell disturbed Tarka. Oh, come on. We come out quicker before. Why are you mucking about? They're not there. Tom! Don't point that thing at me! Damn it all. You're Tom. You bloody mazed. Don't waste your cartridges on Vic Fing. We mere after rabbits. Tarka did not stop until he reached the sanctuary of Ramshorn Pond, a mile away. the annoyance of the swans, he hunted the waters of the pond.
A blown grey rain heralded the onset of winter. Instinct moved Tarka to make a warm couch in a clump of rushes beneath a bramble thicket. During his wanderings in the creeks behind the pond, the scent of another otter attracted him. He heard an otter's whistle and a feeling of joy warmed his being. White Tip was her name, and she was the same age as Tarka. Tarka's emotions were as intense as they were quick. He was in love with White Tip. Otter also wanted White Tip as his mate. Tarka was so frightened that he ran away back to the safety of Ram's Horn Pond. His ardor dampened. The icicle spirit had arrived and for two days and nights the frosty vapor lay over the estuary. No power could exorcise it.
out of the blizzard had dropped a herd of wild swans and a strange thick-set bird, an arctic owl. Mile after mile, its soft and silent wings had carried it from the frozen land of the northern lights. For two days, Taka did not venture from his warm couch until hunger forced him to set out in search of food. The ice talons set harder in the land. No twitter of finch or linnet was heard, for those which remained were dead. One night, raving with hunger, Taka was drawn to a nearby farmyard. Reuben? Reuben! What? Have you fed the dog? The smell of ducks was painful to Taka. Juices flowed into his mouth, his heart beat fast. Dogs no more. 